from Texas, Mr. Gomert, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for being here, Mr. Rosenstein. Thank you. Did you ever tell Special Counsel Robert Mueller that, in essence, everything you do must not only be just and fair, but must also appear beyond reproach? Anything in, like that? In essence, yes. Yes. Well, since uh, Attorney General Sessions recused himself, you are effectively the boss of the Special Counsel and staff, correct? Yeah. It is correct that I am effectively the boss. Okay. Um, well, we all know that FBI Director James Comey was fired. Uh, we know of your letter. We know of your public statements. But here's a question. To your knowledge, who first proposed the idea of firing James Comey as FBI Director? Congressman, I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, the President has explained that he made the decision, and I'm not going to comment beyond that. At the time you wrote the letter suggesting a firing, did you believe what you put in that letter? Yes, I did. All right. If an FBI employee goes into a meeting and as part of his job, in furtherance of his job, someone in the government, and he comes out and he makes a memo memorializing the meeting, perhaps uh, a, in the future, um, past memory refreshed, is that memo DOJ property? Generally, Congressman, I would think that it would be. It might depend on what's in the memo or what the subject matter is, but generally the answer would be yes. Well, in the FBI employment agreement, or yeah, employment agreement, there's a statement that says that, and this is the person agreeing to work for the FBI, all information acquired by me in connection with my official duties with the FBI and all official material to which I have access remain the property of the United States of America. I will not reveal by any means any information or material from or related to FBI files or any other information acquired by virtue of my official employment. If you make a memo of things that were discussed in as part of your job, then it would be a violation of that agreement to send that to someone to leak to the press. Isn't that right? It, it well may be. All right. In uh, the question I'm about to ask, I'm not asking what you may have told Attorney General Jeff Sessions. I don't want to know any words used or ideas conveyed nor sources referenced. In fact, I'm asking a question that could not possibly have any other answer other than one of two words, that would be yes or no. You are completely free to wholly answer this question with one of those two words, and neither word is privileged, confidential, or classified. Here's the question. As Attorney General Jeff Sessions' deputy, did you give Jeff Sessions any advice regarding whether or not he should recuse himself in the matter of the Russian investigation? Yes or no? Uh, no. Can I give a little bit of an explanation, Congressman? I appreciate you asking that question. I wasn't there. I was confirmed, I believe, on April 25th and took office on April 26th. I was not there at the time of the recusal. Right. And you, you ever talked to Bruce Orr? Yes. He, and, and wasn't he four doors down from yours? You know, I haven't counted, but he was down the hall. All right. Um, and, of course, he's been demoted over the relationship with Fusion GPS, and then, of course, we found out that uh, his wife, Nellie, uh, was a Russian expert and was paid by Fusion GPS through summer and fall of 2016, helping the Clinton campaign get apparently a dossier from the Russians. Uh, how well do you know the people that work on your hall? Uh, well, it, it varies, uh, Congressman. I think that's the precise answer. It varies. Some of them I know well, some of them I don't know as well. All right. Of course, everybody has some opinions, political opinions or otherwise. The key is not having those affect or bias you in the Department of Justice. Correct. Well, here is uh, Mr. Strzok, some of his texts talking about Trump. He's an idiot like Trump. And Martin O'Malley's, a, well, a D word. I'm not watching. I can't tell you how little I care right now. It's talking about the Republican Convention, so much more substantive than the representative debates. Uh, he goes on, uh, uh, at some point, the Rep Republican Party needs to pull their head out of their blank. Shows no sign of occurring anytime soon. Uh, of course, he's, you know, the F we were told by Christopher Ray stands for fidelity, but this, these were all made in the course of infidelity. Uh, and then he makes slurs against Kasich. He, it's just unbelievable. I truly hate these people. 
talking about the Republicans, no support for the women who actually has to spend the rest of her life rearing this child, but we care about, quote, life. And then a-holes. Um, how can he, how the F can he be a Republican? And on and on it goes. America will get what the voting public deserves, uh, and that's what I'm afraid of. God, Hillary should win 100, 100 million to zero. Did you hear him make a comment the size of, anyway, this is not just political opinions. This is disgusting, unaccountable bias, and there's no way that could not affect a person's work. Were you aware of just how biased Mr. Strzok was? No, I was not. Thank you. Uh, one final thing. Uh, you, um, I'm asking you a question. The answer is not classified nor privileged. Um, based on information and belief, to the best of your knowledge, has the FBI ever used work product or report, any part of which was paid for by a political campaign, political party, political candidate, or, per, uh, or uh, prepared on a candidate's behalf? Uh, Congressman, the, the issue that you're the time Inquired of the gentleman about. has expired. The witness may answer the question. Uh, I know that uh, we're working with at least one uh, committee, House Intelligence, that has access to that information. I believe that they'll get whatever information. Sir, I'm asking a general question. I'm not specific. The time of the asking, gentleman has expired. But the I'm asking to answer the get question an answer. in the form not, that was not already to my presented. Personal knowledge, but I'm not representing. I don't know everything about the FBI. And Mr. Chairman, point of personal privilege, uh, since my uh, character was uh, slandered by. Mr. Cohen, who said that um, I never, we never challenged Mueller until he uh, came after the administration when he knows how tough I went after FBI Director Mueller. He's been here when I went after Mueller. While Bush was president, he, he knows I have been after him the because of the damage he did and what he stated about me is a lie. And I need the record to properly reflect that. The gentleman's Comment is duly noted. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Bass, for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, according to an August 17th FBI intelligence assessment titled Black Identity Extremists Likely Motivated to Target Law Enforcement Officers, quote, it is very likely the black identity extremist perceptions of police brutality against African Americans spurred an increase in retaliatory violence. So I've tried to get to the bottom of where this report came from, who did it, what its status is. I've asked uh, Attorney General Sessions, I've asked Director Ray, and so now I want to ask you. Did you order the FBI to conduct this assessment? Sorry, what was the date? August 2017, August of this year. No, I did not. Do you know who authored the report? Are you familiar with the report? Not familiar with the report. I'm familiar with the general issue. And so maybe you could talk a little bit about the general issue, yes. in particular, uh, when the FBI began tracking black identity extremism. I think uh, it's important for me to explain, Congresswoman, that uh, the FBI does not make a determination with regard to domestic groups to investigate them based upon their First Amendment views or their affiliation. It bases uh, uh, its decisions on evidence of a propensity to violence. So with regard to members of any ideology, uh, domestically, the FBI would only be investigating if there were some indication. Do you believe that there's a political movement in the country called black identity extremism? I don't believe the FBI intends that to encompass a particular political movement. What they do is they try to categorize different threats that, uh, that they identify. So you said investigate, but before you do an investigation, there's surveillance, correct? Generally, no, there may need to be a determination first that there was a basis for an investigation, typically before any surveillance. So how does that determination take place, and where has it taken place? Yeah, I, I, uh, if you want details, I need to get back to you, uh, but the FBI does have very strict guidelines. As you know, several decades ago, there was quite a bit of controversy about this issue, and the FBI has very uh, detailed guidelines for when they initiate investigations. Uh, and I'm not aware of any departure from those guidelines. 
So one thing that, uh, and I am aware of the FBI's history uh, from many years ago, COINTELPRO, and many people are looking at this document, Black Identity Extremism, as COINTELPRO too. Uh, one of the concerns uh, that has been raised and that I raised with Attorney General Sessions and Director Ray is that this document, for whatever reason, was mass distributed to law enforcement uh, offices around the country. Are you aware of that? No, I'm not. So when we talked to uh, Director Ray, it wasn't clear how this term was even developed. In other words, what evidence was it based on mm -hmm. to even come up with a term like that and then to write a document about it and then to distribute it to law enforcement around the country? I don't know the answer to that, Congresswoman, but uh, if it's of any reassurance, I've been in this job for eight months. I haven't seen any indication that the FBI is approaching this in a biased way. Uh, you know, they're conducting investigations where they believe the person who is the subject represents a potential threat, not simply because they believe in an ideology or associate with an ideology, but because they represent a particular threat. And I believe that so, the FBI guidelines are designed specifically to ensure that there are no abuses. So what I am hearing from activists around the country, uh, in particular activists who were protesting law enforcement, and you know, police brutality, or uh, deaths at the hands of law enforcement, is that they're being visited by the FBI that the FBI is leaving you know, business cards. And then what the concern about that is, is that if they do engage in a conversation with an FBI agent and perhaps make a mistake, or maybe say something that isn't true, then they're vulnerable to be prosecuted for lying to a law enforcement officer. So the activists that have received visits by the FBI have never been involved in violence at all. Are you aware of that happening in any of your offices around the country? No. Let me just express another concern about this. When a document that doesn't seem to have any scientific basis that develops a category called black identity extremism that nobody can say whether or not it really exists, when you send a document like that to law enforcement around the country, you know, in some places, I will worry that they will take that to say that any time there is an officer-involved shooting and then there is a protest, that the people that protest might be black identity extremists. Congresswoman, to the best of my knowledge, uh, the FBI is not uh, investigating people who are peacefully protesting. I, as I said, I haven't read that document. Uh, I'll, I'll review it. Uh, and. Uh, see what it says. But I, don't. I would appreciate it if you would, and if there is no basis for this term, that then the FBI take the step to retract the document and send a message to law enforcement around the country that no such category exists. I yield back my time. <laughs>